Set in the year 2084, so Fanny and Alexander just began its second act. And Total Recall follows Douglas Quaid, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, a construction worker who is haunted by bizarre dreams about the planet Mars and a strange woman. His wife, Laurie, played by Sharon Stone, tries to dismiss these dreams, but Arnold, I'm not calling him Douglas, he's Arnold. So me, dickhead. Heads to a company called Recall, spelled with a K to look edgy. They focus on implanting false memories into people's minds as a form of vacation. Arnold naturally wants a two week secret agent fantasy there, but something goes wrong, leading to him revealing he's actually already been to Mars for realsies. At least I think he has. This movie's just really confusing. I don't know what was real, what wasn't, what happened, what didn't happen. I don't know. I'm not even sure I liked it or not. That's right. They manage to sedate him, wipe his memory, and send him home, but he's then attacked by his mate, Joey's dad from Friends. This is not right. Yeah, but this I don't want to hear it. Now go to my room. Leading to him terminating them all. I swear I will not kill anyone. Then his wife follows and reveals that she's not actually his wife. She only met him six weeks ago and their entire marriage was a false memory implanted in him and she was sent there to monitor him. Wow. This is the Truman Show before the Truman Show was the Truman Show. And why the hell is the Truman Show not in the book? You tell me. Arnold is then on the run until he meets a savior who gives him some goodies, including a video of himself from the previous memory, explaining that he used to work for a guy called Cohagen, but he turned on him and wiped his own memory to... somehow protect himself. What? What the hell was that going to do? Oh no. A guy's going to mug me. Better wipe my memory. Then he can't get me. Never know. Anyway, Arnold has a tracking device in his head, which he quickly gets rid of and makes it to Mars, which is a damn holiday resort, meeting the dream woman Melina, played by Rachel Tickerton, and a taxi driver called Benny, who also helps. During all of this madness, his wife and a doctor, that cop from Bill and Ted's bogus journey, I totally believe you, dude, show up and claim he's actually stuck back at Recall, and all of this was his fantasy that he wanted, but it's gone wrong and he needs to return to reality. However, he doesn't buy it and the madness continues. More people die, action, deaths, chaos, there's a bomb, but Arnold saves the day, and... We never actually find out if any of this was real or not. Son of a bitch, that is genius. That's what we wanted you to think. The film is based on the short story with quite possibly the worst title in existence, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale, written by Philip K. Dick. What? There's, there's nothing remotely amusing about the name Dick. You all need to grow up. No need to be rude. And screenwriters Dan O'Bannon and Ronald Chusett, who also wrote Alien, bought the rights to the story, but they were unable to find anyone to fund the project, being turned down by several studios. Eventually, Dino De Laurentiis agreed to take it on, with Richard Dreyfuss in the lead role, though Patrick Swayze, Christopher Reeve, Jeff Bridges, Mark Harmon, and Tom Selleck were all considered. In 1987, it was announced that De Laurentiis was going to make the film with his own company, with Bruce Beresford to direct, but this version was never actually made. David Cronenberg was then brought in to direct, with William Hurt in the lead, but there were constant disputes delaying the production further. I worked on it for a year and did about 12 drafts. Eventually, we got to a point where Ron Schusett said, you know what you've done? You've done the Philip K. Dick version. I said, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? He said, no, no, we want to do Raiders of the Lost Ark, go to Mars. I'm sick of you and your goddamn lies. Unfortunately, after June flopped, De Laurentiis lost his motivation and dropped out. He did, however, come up with the idea of mutants. Aliens. They're aliens. Come on, guys. Are you sure about this? Arnold Schwarzenegger had previously approached De Laurentiis about starring, but was turned down. However, now that he backed out, he was allowed to do so, and he even personally selected Paul Verhoeven to direct after the success of Robocop, which Arnold was also considered to star in. The script had gone through a whopping 42 drafts by this point, but it still had no third act. More writers were brought in to finish it up, and the director added a lot more sci-fi material to balance it out with the action. Originally, there was also a lot more comedy, which the new director toned down at the request of Schwarzenegger. Furthermore, originally, Arnold's character was going to be an accountant. Yeah, because... Doesn't he just look like the brainy type? Come on, Jenkins, let's crunch those numbers. Bullshit. 
but it was changed to a construction worker to make more sense with Arnold's build, and that more effective when he feels more vulnerable by his mind being stolen. Speaking of vulnerable, Arnold really showed his heart of gold on set. Michael Ironside was very frequently on the phone to his sister who was suffering from cancer at the time. As soon as Schwarzenegger found out, he brought him to his trailer and spent an entire hour talking to him and his sister, giving them specific exercises to do and foods to eat to remain healthy. Neither of them have ever forgotten the big guy's equally big heart and kindness towards them. But he and Sharon Stone absolutely hated working with each other, so there's that. Hey, he's only human. Come on, don't bullshit me. Eventually, Total Recall was released on June the 1st, 1990, earning a worldwide total of $261.2 million. Total Recall was ranked as 79th on Rotten Tomatoes' Top 100 Sci-Fi Movies and it picked up an Academy Award for Best Visual Effects and two Saturn Awards for Best Science Fiction Film and Best Costume. A novelization followed, which was more focused on an earlier draft of the script than the final version we saw, and the ending was drastically different, taking away the mystery that the movie had, explaining that Arnold was dreaming and just saw Melina as a model elsewhere. Bullshit. It's coincidence. What I love about this movie. Yes, I love this movie. I was just as shocked as you. You believe him? is that you truly can never predict where it's going. You never know what's gonna happen next. First they say, oh, he's back at recall. None of this happened and he's just hallucinating. Then they even claim it was all a setup and they intentionally planned everything. They hired everyone who's attacked him to ensure that he somehow stayed alive to lead them to this deformed baby thing to kill it. And then it ends without us even finding out whether or not it was real. It's one of the most unpredictable mind fucks I have ever seen. There's even a part where he finally gets blasted away so you think, aha, now. Now he's gonna wake up and it'll be a dream. But they double swerve your ass and it's just an Arnold hologram. God damn you, movie! Shut up! I mean, even the opening titles get you pumped up for the film. Yeah, let's go, let's do this! Then Arnold's eyes pop out like Christopher Lloyd and Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Bit weird. I had a terrible dream they made a third Terminator movie. Fuck you, you asshole! See, they can make Terminator references, so can I. Give you something to dream about. A Jingle All The Way sequel that actually happened. Ah, get it away! Sweetheart, we've been through this a million times. You'd hate it on Mars. It's dry, it's ugly, it's boring. And it gets everywhere. Oh, just like his political career. You know, it's weird that this place is so futuristic they can visit Mars, but they still need a crappy subway train as a means of transportation. <laughs> and Arnold's face here as he freaks out is just hilarious. Did someone say cookies? Get the cookie away. I've been trying to tell you. Someone has erased his memory. We need to claim the rights before Eternal Sunshine does it way better in 14 years time. I mean, what am I doing here? I'm sorry. Would you please rephrase the question? Huh? How did I get in this taxi? The door opened. You got in. <laughs> My kind of sarcasm. By the way, how creepy is this dummy driver? Oh. I also can't help but truly feel for Arnold. I mean, everyone wants him dead. At first, I kind of felt bad for his wife. I mean, he goes to recall and bear in mind, this is before he knows that she's not really his wife. He mentions the dream girl and describes the type of woman he wants in his fantasy. That's a bit douchey. I felt really bad for her, but then even she turns against him. And then that cab driver I mentioned? Yeah, first he's literally the token black guy. Oh, Christ! Now they're after me! Nice. But then he's an alien. Oh, okay. I did not see that coming. And then even he turns against him. Jesus Christ, the doctor shows up. He's against Arnold. It even turns out his past self tricked his present self. So even he is trying to kill himself. He's lying. I absolutely adore the screenplay. There's so much intelligence behind it. In addition to the mind fuckery of the plot and the unpredictability aspect. Just tiny details like despite Arnold finding out the truth, Sharon Stone still wants to pork, but she's only trying to buy some time. There's a genius shootout in a metal detector where we only see the x-rays, which is hilarious and awesome all at the same time. It's just so clever and different. But wouldn't these bullets just go straight through that body and into Arnold? I don't know. I also really struggle to take Arnold seriously when he's walking around with a goddamn Towel on his head. Just shoved real hard. Just nothing funny about that line. Seriously, you guys just need to grow up. Just pull it out. <laughs> 
You're all just so childish. Also, how the hell does this not kill him? Is he actually a cyborg in this universe? And when he discards the tracker, some rats are moving it around and the bad guys just spend ages shooting at them. It's actually pretty funny. And I have to say, it looks like Mars is actually easier to get access to than America. What the hell's this? The Martians love Kawato. They think he's fucking George Washington. <laughs> how can they fuck George Washington when he's dead? Checkmate writers. Things hardly ever fuck up around here. Right, so Arnold disguises himself as this woman, but there's so many questions here. Firstly, how does he even do this? I mean, is he actually the T-1000 now and he can morph into other people? Two, why can he only say... Two weeks. Excuse me? Uh, two weeks. Three, where did he even get this getup from? It wasn't in the suitcase given to him and it wouldn't have been able to fit in it if he bought it after. Four, he takes forever to take the head off and run and nobody shoots at him. They just stare like... Uh... Uh... Oh, we should shoot. <laughs> oh. Can't believe we missed him. You'd also think that everyone on Mars would know Arnold's face and be on the lookout for him, but nope, he's able to use fake ID and get a place to stay. Oh, shit. But he does have another clever moment when his past self leaves him a note and he writes down the same word to check the handwriting. It's subtle, but very well done. Still bulging, I see. <clears throat> what you been feeding this thing? Plants. <laughs> okay, I love that line. And I think that's probably the best one in the entire movie. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> yeah, don't want any of that. Come back at me, you get. <laughs> and again! <laughs> it's how I fight. I can go in the UFC. Ronda Rousey? <laughs> Sweetheart, be reasonable. After all, we're married. Consider that a divorce. <laughs> if only mine was that easy. That line's amazing, by the way. But remember that uh, <laughs> Arnold is the reason all those um, innocent people just died. They all covered for him and, and, and snuck him out and... He, he's fine. He's living it up with his bird. He just he just left the other, the innocent people to, to get shot and... Bit of a dick, really. You're having paranoid delusions. And many weren't really keen on the musical score, but I absolutely love it. I think it brings out the whimsical and fantasy feel expertly, and the cinematography is gorgeous to look at. How can you do this? You're a mutant. I got four kids to feed. So what happened to number five? Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, man. You got me. <laughs> I ain't even married. But you, you don't need to be married to have kids. And the villain is so cold and ruthless, I love it. Yes, what is it? Sir, the oxygen level is bottoming out in Sector G. What do you want me to do about it? Don't do anything. But they won't last an hour, sir. Fuck him. Very well put. Where the fuck are you? Oh, yeah. Either a really cringy, awful one liner or a really clever pun. You decide. But how are they even breathing here? I mean, Mars's atmosphere is coming through. There's no gravity and yet they're perfectly able to breathe. This dude even flies through an open tunnel and dies from it. So they should too. And honestly, this is perfectly ended. No answer and I absolutely love it. And if you want to know what I believe, I'm going to be the boring one here and say it's more logical that... Yeah, it's all a dream. That's just more believable than this actually just so happened to take place. Sorry, but yeah, it, it's, it's probably a dream. 
but a fucking awesome one. Oh, that's good. Due to its success, video games soon followed, and even a TV series pilot in 1999 serving as a sequel, though it seemed more similar to Blade Runner than Total Recall. Comic books and a sequel were even written, which can be found online. It's based on Philip K. Dick's short story, The Minority Report, and was to again star Arnold, as well as Chris Tucker of all people. But the project just fell through, though Steven Spielberg did adapt it to his own sci-fi thriller of the same name in 2002. And of course, we can't have nice things, so a remake in 2009 was announced with Colin Farrell and Brian Cranston in the lead roles, and was almost 3D as well, but the director backed out thinking that it would be too much. I've not seen it, but I've heard it's absolutely god-awful, and sadly, it was actually released on my 20th first birthday. Yay. Great. This movie is amazing. Terrific action, amazing script, incredible direction and music. Some of the effects and makeup haven't really aged very well and it's a bit cheesy at times, but you don't really care. Total Recall is a total masterpiece. <laughs> I'm the most boring, like, sci-fi fan out there. No, it was all a dream, didn't really happen. <laughs> <laughs>